So if you guys look at the first one, what we have is solving for the zeros. Now, basically, ladies and gentlemen, when we're solving for the zeros, we always want to look to factoring, because factoring typically is going to be our least time-consuming method to be able to determine the zeros. So like what we have covered before, to determine the zeros, we're simply going to set our equation equal to 0. And then what we want to do is determine, first of all, is there anything we can factor out that all three of our terms share? Is there anything that all three of our terms share in this factoring equation? X. X. So I'm going to factor out the x. So 0 equals x times x squared minus 5x minus 6. And what's nice about that now is you guys can see, so now I have a product equal to 0. So I can say x equals 0 and x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Well, this is already solved, so that's good. Here, I don't have this simply solved. This is another quadratic again. I have to solve. But fortunately, it's in a, quadra it's in a quadratic form that I should be more familiar with, right? So now we need to see, can I factor this further to help us solve? So I can create my diamond, and I say negative 6 and negative 5. What two numbers multiply to give me negative 6, but then add to give me negative 5? Yes, Jess? Negative 6 and 1. Negative 6 and positive 1. So I do x minus 6 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now I set these equal to 0 again. And therefore, I have x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. So my zeros are all right there. OK? That was one that was similar to the one that was on your homework quiz. So if you're one of those students